globalization of the narrative story. So this series of paintings is called Las, Las Hermanas Moradas, and this painting, these are about a friend's trip to Mexico. And um, this person was actually, she knows the other person that went to Beirut, so it's kind of like we're all friends. <laughs> and um, so she told this really funny story one day that I was at our house about how she couldn't find her sister for a couple years, hadn't heard from her. The two sisters look like twins, and um, they're both um, Ghanaian and um, white, and very light skinned. They're both like 6'2", with big bushy curly hair. And um, however, when I illustrate them here, I made them purple because I wanted to just make it kind of surreal and kind of different and funny. And uh, it's about their difference and again, not so much about their race. Um, so my character, the, and the original story, she's not a character yet. She was just saying that she went to this place in Mexico, couldn't pronounce the name. When she got off, actually, let me start from the beginning. I'll just read this here because it's hard to tell the story quickly. Um, it says, Anissa, you should come visit me. So the sisters are talking to each other on the phone. And um, she says to what to, uh, okay, I gave them different names and the real names, and sometimes it's hard to keep those straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Anissa is the main character, and her sister's name is Arlisa, so they have names that are similar. In real life, their names are like one letter apart also, and start with A. <laughs> Um, so, Anissa just says that um, she couldn't find her sister. She, the sister called her one day out of the blue and said, hey, you should come visit me down here in Mexico. She'd been gone for two years. She had got a Volkswagen van and just drove to Mexico and like, stayed there. So one sister's kind of like hippie and free-spirited while the other one is kind of like um, very urban and very kind of like, oh, like harsh and like always keeping it real. <laughs> um, so she says it was my space cadet sister on the other line. She was in some place, she was some place in Mexico I couldn't pronounce, some place thousands of miles away and it sounded like wah 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 This is how she said it. She said, I was in wah 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 Like, it didn't have a name. So um, the day that she is supposed to go to Mexico, she has on her voicemail something that says, meet me at the beach when you get here. <laughs> So she's like, what? Meet you at the beach. <laughs> what beach? What's the beach? Where am I going? So in the first, in the first uh, panel, I think of these as panels, kind of like storyboards in a way, um, my character has arrived in something that is, I tried to base on sort of like Mexico City. So Mexico City had a lot more trees, like green trees in it. Um, and she meets this white guy who's like, oh yeah, after two hours of ambling around the city. He's like, I've heard of that place. It's where all the people smoke weed. <laughs> so she gets on a bus and she uh, is going for miles and miles and miles and only seeing migrant, like farm workers get on and off the bus until a white woman gets on the bus and she says to her, do you know where you're going? And then when she gets off the bus, she has to remember where the tree is so that she can get back on the bus to go home. And then here, in this scene here, I have um, her, oh, I missed one, I'm sorry. This is, she's walking aimlessly, you know, along the beach, and her sister's boyfriend approaches her and says, oh my gosh, you must be her sister, let me take you to her at the beach. So then um, they walk to the beach, and when she gets to her sister, she says in the original story, oh my gosh, she was looking so beautiful, more bronze than ever, just laying there, just looked like she'd been on vacation for two years. She's in a bikini and her body looked amazing and there was a trail of blood running down her leg. <laughs> so she said, bitch, they don't have tampons down here. <laughs> and that was, their, that was her greeting to her sister. And the sister was like, what do you need those for? So that's what this painting was. <laughs> um, I didn't really want to put the trail of blood on the painting, so instead I have like this sort of batiki tie-dye type of like, <laughs> And I just have the statement there, which I think is powerful enough for the imagination. And um, here she's reading Hair Magazine, and um, the book she's reading is Kindred by Octavia Butler. And so, <laughs> any other sci-fi fans here, that was one of your, one of Octavia Butler's first um, famous novels. And I wanted to put things there that were symbolic there, and I felt that kindred spirit of the two sisters should come through at that moment. Um, and then here, um, she's talking about 
main character talks about how it was the best time of her life, how um, she um, even smoked opium and had sex, sex with a man, even though she was lesbian. And <laughs> she liked him because he played guitar, cooked oatmeal on a Bunsen burner, and he didn't speak any English whatsoever. So that's what she said. However, on the painting, she tells him in English, you know I'm a lesbian, while she's straddling him. And he says, I know, I know, in English. <laughs> and then she says, what do you mean you know? And so, of course, then I, she didn't, in the original story, give any more information. So I don't know if he had a response to that in English or not, or what that response would have been. But I thought it was funny to kind of leave you hanging there with the thought. And then at the end, it just says, after the first va her first um, vacation ever, she had to choose between um, a sock and letting the monthly visitor flow freely. And um, and so it's kind of like, when in Rome, do as other. When in, what is the expression? Yeah, <laughs> when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Um, and so that's what this piece is about. Um, with all of the work that you see here today, um, I think that even though it's funny and even though it's about vernacular, folklore, everyday culture, I am very much aware of the discourses that the work can be put through and discussed as far as social political commentary is concerned. So that would be, um, you know, feminism, it would be, you know, race, it would be gender, it would be um, drugs, it could be sex, it could be menstruation, women's bodies. I mean, there's so many different, like, code words and hashtags, you know, for academics to get excited about. Whereas, um, you know, again, to use the, the term double voice, um, I feel like I'm trying to do that as well through the work, which is, you know, tell something that's entertaining and has popular appeal as well as um, some weight to it um, that academics can respect and be interested in. So um, that's the work here, not where they're supposed to be. Cool. So, one more <laughs> yes. Uh, I noticed you use a lot of very cinematic compositions uh, in your work, even to the extent of in a couple of some of the pieces you actually use an over, over the shoulder of the main subject. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you talk about your cinematic influences, or is that okay. just... <laughs> Darren? Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. Darren, Darren's a filmmaker, um, and he's asking the question of, um, you know, how I come up with the ideas for the compositions. Um, I did go to film school for a year at UCLA, the grad film program, but, I, but I'm not a filmmaker, and I was trying to figure out if I was going to do the producing or writing thing, mm -hmm. and then I went to art school after that because I kind of dropped out. I felt sort of... I don't know. It wasn't really the right thing for me. It's still creeping into your work. Yes, because I felt like I could tell the stories better with pictures rather than like actually writing in text. Sure. Even though I use text in my paintings, it's not 90 pages of it. <laughs> that was ooh, ooh, terrible. Oh gosh. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I watch films. I think that we all do. We all watch TV and we all watch films. And so that's part of, as a visual artist, I exist in a visual culture, and I have a lot of things in my, you know, uh, ex you know, um, daily life that I'm exposed to that I can use in the work. And so I think about the shots, but I, it's not like I've studied cinematography, um, and I, I'm not a storyboard artist. So I just think about what would be the best angle with my set of skills to try to convey what I'm conveying and tell the story. Does that answer the question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I have a question, quick oh, question okay. about, the, uh, about the exhibit that I'm not supposed to be. Could you explain the process of creating the paintings? Because they're all connected to the of story. Do you start with one and complete? Or do you kind of work through them as you go? Mm -hmm. um, I do different things at different times. So sometimes I work on several things at once. The jihad paintings, I was working on all of them at the same time, kind of. but. There are times when you have to commit mostly to one and finishing it. And then, um, it depends on how much space I have sometimes. You know, like how many I can put out at the same time. <laughs> um, and so, um, I think we maybe we talked about it just a little bit before you got here, which is that um, I made the paintings. I had the ideas to make the paintings, but not necessarily as a show. But then a concept came along that I could use to put them all together, and then I put them together. So, yeah, so sometimes I do them one on one, sometimes I make multiples at the same time, sometimes I work on different series at the same time as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Please feel free to stay and pummel. I have one more thing to say. I just want to thank each and every person that's been, that is here today. Even if you couldn't stay for the whole entire time, I know how hard it is to get every place. I know there are people here holding me to the fact that they made it here today and I have to make it to support them to some as well. And I just want to say I appreciate every single one of you. It's like, you know, a wish on a birthday wish or, you know, um, a blessing. And um, I'm not a very religious person, as people who know me very well know, but this is the closest way I can get to a prayer. So, <laughs> thank you.